Did you enjoy that? Wasn't that wonderful? I mean, they did an incredible job. Thank you, thank you for all the work that you put in uh, to making sure that we can be prepared to worship God. Uh, just a few announcements that we wanted to. We want to get them out of the way so that uh, so that when we actually start, that, that we're totally focused on worshiping God. And so um, uh, the couple of announcements that we have is this, that uh, as you're aware, we're into our budgeting season, and uh, and we've not done a, a, a pledge campaign this year. Uh, we felt that uh, that a lot of people are experiencing a lot of uh, of uh, stresses and pressures, and so we said, you know what, we're just going to look at what the giving was over the last year and try and see if we can uh, see if we can can put together a, a budget that continues to move Sunbury Church forward. Now, what, uh, uh, what we realized when we went back and looked is that normally we have a very strong uh, November and December giving. And so in order to make sure that we have uh, the most accurate, I asked you if you'd uh, continue to be faithful in your support of, of God's uh, work here at Sunbury United Methodist Church and, and continue to support uh, the work that's, that's taking place here. On a second note, that, uh, that we... Uh, all have been hearing about the uptick in uh, coronavirus cases. And, uh, and so uh, I want you to know that as uh, your pastor and, and the staff uh, that, we've been, uh, that we've been monitoring, watching, and trying to make sure that, that we're aware uh, of all that's going on around us. We definitely want to remain safe. That's one thing we want to do. Uh, and so I'm not quite sure what that means. I've actually talked with the conference office uh, to ask if they have any uh, further uh, communications and, and they said that churches really just need to kind of figure, uh, figure ways to make sure that people are safe. I've also uh, been uh, in contact uh, Friday night with all of our, our uh, ministerial association members as well to talk about this and to say, you know, what, uh, what are you hearing? What, uh, I'm, I'm just saying that the cases are up and, and uh, we as a ministerium are, are keenly aware of the challenges that it might bring. We also are aware that not everybody can wear a mask, that there are medical reasons that, that, uh, that allow exceptions to masks. Uh, but we do know that we still want to make sure that everyone is safe. Uh, one of the things that we've we've just done is that we've purchased face shields so that if someone says I can't wear a mask, they might be able to wear a face shield. But I want you to know that that uh, that that uh, we want everyone to be safe in whatever way that you possibly can. Everyone is always welcome to the worship services, but we will uh, do our best. So if you can't wear a mask, maintain distance and so on and so forth as well. I don't know, I've been talking with a number of individuals, what I don't know is uh, what uh, our governor will be suggesting and also uh, what uh, steps might follow, whether we'll be closing down again and going virtual. A number of churches around uh, the state have already done that, even a lot of Methodist churches have taken that step. Well, we're not there yet, uh, but I want you to be aware that that if, uh, if Governor DeWine comes down and says it's not safe for people to travel and to gather and such, so on, so on, we will have to look at that very seriously. All right, now that we've got all the bad news out of the way, we're here to hear about the good news of Jesus Christ and what it means in our lives. And so I invite you to stand with me and join, uh, join me in singing our first hymn and then remain standing for our gathering.
need a place to belong. Come to my son Mary, who is, who is an engaged family of God. All who seek spiritual brothers and sisters. Come join Sunbury, who is a family engaged in each other's lives. All who strive to grow in faith and love. Come join Sunbury, who is a family engaged in learning to grow in our faith. All who are unsure and feel unworthy. Come join Sunbury, who is a family engaged in sharing God's love with everyone. You may be seated. As we prepare our hearts to enter into our time of prayer, I uh, invite you to sing along with this course. And, and basically it says we need to put aside the things that are, uh, that are weighing on us so that God might speak to us. We're going to sing this a couple of times.
it is that we run ahead of you and that we, we find ourselves looking all around and you're not there. And that's when we really need you the most. So teach us, most holy God, teach us, please, to be attentive to your ways. Teach us to be guided by your spirit. And more than anything else, teach us to remain in love with you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. I'd like to start this morning by asking, does anybody have a favorite hymn? Favorite song? Yes, Rocky. Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, yes. Anybody else? Yes. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Something about that. Yeah, I gave it there. I love that song. I remember listening to it over and over and over, being moved by it. Yes, anyone else have a hymn or a song? Yes. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. The old staple tells exactly what it's all about. Yes. Bridges over troubled water. Pardon me? Bridges over troubled water. Bridges over troubled water, yes. America the beautiful. America the beautiful, yes. Reminds us of our heritage, yes. The great thou art. Yes. We've sung a lot of these songs over the last several weeks. We've gone back into our, into our heritage, into our history, and, and we've really tr tried to, to bring those back and remind us of, uh, of the meaning of those songs. And, and, uh, but I want to tell you that I can remember it oh so well. Uh, it was about three decades ago. It's hard to think. Some of you might think I've lost it by then. But it was about three decades ago that Catherine and I were serving as missionaries in Zaire, Africa. That's what it was called then. It's now called the Democratic Republic of Congo. And while Catherine and I were serving on, as missionaries there, uh, I had the privilege of, of going up and visiting one of our mission stations and the work that they were doing up near Kananga. Now, I need you to understand that, that for travel, it's not like here in the U.S. They have little airplanes that are maybe four or six seaters. And, um, and, and they, they were called MAF, Mission Aviation Fellowship. And, and, and they would, for cost, take you and supplies up to your mission stations uh, and they raised their own funds to, to support their salaries and, and the maintenance on their airplanes and stuff. An incredibly brave um, team of people. And so I got to hop into one of those small six-seater airplanes and, and what would normally take us uh, maybe 20 minutes by air to get there, it would take three to four weeks if you tried to drive it. Just imagine, that's, you were driving through the jungle uh, and, and it, was, it was a hard road to travel. So we were flying up to a mission post up near Kananga and, and, and the tribes people there, they, they, had, they had cleared off a, a little strip for the airplane to land. And, and, and if you know anything about aviation, it was known as a short strip, which means that it was just the minimum to get an airplane up and down. That was it. And as he circled to make sure that there were no animals that were on the, the makeshift runway of, of dirt and clay, he came down and he landed, and there was a couple of individuals that were there, and, and right away they greeted me and said, okay, Reverend Myers, uh, are you ready? And we walked for about an hour and 45 minutes. And all of a sudden, our guides, my guide stopped. And he started putting his head up and started looking around. Now we were traveling this way. 
And he was looking up, and all of a sudden he said, we have to go this way. And, and I, I asked him, I said, well, we were heading this way. What? He said, well, that's where the music's coming from. I heard no music, my friends. I heard no music. But as we started to walk that way, the sounds of nature began to blend with something else. A faint melody began to be heard as it was weaving its way through the jungle. It grew louder and louder and louder and eventually this is what I heard. seeing 
church done with nothing. That's the gift they gave me. They gave me the gift of seeing church take place with nothing. They had nothing. Over 180 people had gathered in the middle of nowhere with nothing, with the sole purpose to sing praises to God. If that wasn't enough, they had a, a young Zaire, you see the red on the side of the screen, that was their song, worship leader. She was a young Zairean woman. As everyone gathered underneath there, she would turn around and she would say, 170. Boom, they'd all start singing the song. Someone else would say, 142. 118. Everybody would sing. This went on and on for over an hour. Various people would call out numbers and everyone would join the song. The hour went by so quickly. I, I, was, I started looking around and there was no hymnal. Even the leader had no hymnal with her. I wonder what would happen if, if we were today to say, we're going to sing number 64. We'd probably have Amazing Grace, the Old Rugged Cross, How Great Thou Art, and we'd all sing. But not there. They all sang the same song, every verse. Well, after the service was over, I had a chance to talk with the pastor. And I asked him, I said, how, did, how, did, how do your people know all these songs that was being requested? Just all they're saying is a number. And here's where I was touched. Because he recounted with great fondness the time that the first missionary had come with the purpose and design of starting a church in the middle of the jungle. And as this missionary told them about the love of Jesus and the grace that Jesus brought and the, and the mercy that God had and, and their hearts were warmed and changed and transformed, the only thing that this missionary could give them was one Bible and one hymnal. That's it. And as they began to think about what they would do, they said it, a person could not join the church unless they could sing the hymns in the hymnal. And so if someone said, I'd like to join the church, they would say, okay, this is your week. And they would spend all week with that family, 8, 10, 12 hours a day that they would say, all right, this is number 170, Amazing Grace. And they would sing it so that they would get the words and memory. All right, this is 418. This is how great thou art. And they would teach that all day, 8, 10, 12 hours a day. And by the end of the week, they had their hymnal memorized. I'll never forget what he told me. He says that the, the pastor told me at the end of that week, he would tell the families, hold on to the music in your head. It will be your best friend for life. Isn't that true? Last week we learned about Paul and Silas. And they were singing during some of the darkest times in their lives. Singing while they're they're shackled in a Roman prison. And guess what? I can't imagine they took their hymnals with them. They were singing the psalms that they had learned from youth. A number of years ago, I, I ran across, and it's, it's ancient history now, but it still touches, touches me. 
of an account that was recorded that, uh, that happened when UMCOR sent teams down to New Orleans to help with one of the disasters down there. And they had this striking image on the news of, that the medical staff in, in a New Orleans hospital struggling to care for their patients. You see, their medical facility had lost electricity. They had no running water. Their food was running short. Medicines were running low. And in the midst of that horrible situation, several medical staff members had gathered around a patient's bed. And what did they do? They sang songs of faith and trust. Because God is the only one who could be counted on to help them during this time of difficulty. They shared the hymns that some of them had learned in worship services. Ones that they had sung Sunday after Sunday or songs that they had learned that they had learned in Sunday school. And in that storm-damaged hospital during the devastation that's been described as hell on earth, they were singing together heavenward. I wonder, doesn't the church have a song to sing? I mean, don't we have a song to sing to those who are hungry? Or those that are experiencing injustice. Or those that might be experiencing racism in whatever forms. Or don't we, don't we have a song to sing dealing with the poverty that's, that we find all around the world? Because the songs of the people of God are, are fundamental indicators that God's wonders has not ceased. The songs that the church sings says that, that there are possibilities that are still available. The songs that we sing says that the dream is still there for God to intervene and bring hope. Because I believe this, when we sing as a congregation, we are affirming our faith that God is still active among us and continues to sing a new song into creation, a new song into being. I like what Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote. He's a German theologian that was during the time of Nazi Germany. His words are powerful. He wrote, it is the Christ hymn knew every morning that the family fellowship strikes up at the beginning of the day. That hymn is sung by the whole church of God on earth and in heaven. And it's the song in which you are summoned to sing, to join God in this song. It's a song of, of victory of the children of Israel passing through the Red Sea it's the story of Mary singing about the announcement of the birth of the Christ child. It's the song of Paul and Silas singing of hope in that night in prison. You see, in the morning every day, Bonhoeffer says, the church on earth lifts up this song. And in the evening, it closes the day with the hymn. And this song has a different ring on earth because it originates from heaven. And it's the voice of the church that is heard singing this heavenly song together. So he says, when you come and you sing a song or a hymn on Sunday morning, it's not you who sings. It's the church that is singing and you are invited to be a part of the church's song, to share in that song. I love those words. Because when we sing, we minister to each other. When we sing, we encourage each other. When we sing, it takes that discouragement that many may be feeling and experiencing. It takes that depression that is so heavy and overwhelming. 
and it lifts it up. Not because we are singing or you are singing, but it's because we, the church, are singing. And we can rejoice again and again because the music and the words remind us of the greatness of God. You know, I, I admit this freely that uh, sometimes I pick songs I don't know. I'll open the hymnal and I'll say, boy, that, those words are incredible. Let's sing that this Sunday. I'm sorry. <laughs> because I'll stand up here and I have no idea what it is. But it's a song of the church. It's a song of the church that you are invited to be a part of. Let me tell you a, a real live illustration. Right here from Sunbury United Methodist Church. It was not too long ago that I chose one of those incredibly new songs that I did not know, neither did anybody else. And we worked our way through it. I don't think it was one of my better song selections. After the service, one of our members came up and said, Pastor, I don't really care for that hymn you chose. Don't know it, don't like it, didn't want to sing it. Don't do it again. You know what I'm talking about. And I said, I'm sorry. Um, I picked it because the words were meaningful. That person moved on. It wasn't only a few minutes after that, another person came through the back of the line and said, Pastor, Never heard that song before. And I'm telling you, I came in really, really depressed, not knowing what to do. I don't know where you found that song, but it was the most incredible song that lifted my spirits. I'm so glad I came this morning. That's the song of the church. I'm sorry to tell you, it's not your song. It's not my song. It's the church's song that we sing. And we are invited to be a part of the church's song. You see, that's an example of what happens when the church sings the song of Christ. I think that's maybe what Paul had in mind when he wrote to this young church in Colossae. You'll find it in the third chapter of Colossians. Paul says, it's the peace of Christ that must rule in our hearts since we are members of one body. So we're to be thankful, allowing the words of Christ to dwell in us richly as we teach, as we encourage one another, and as we sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in our hearts to God. Now earlier in his ministry, Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus. You'll find this in the fifth chapter of Ephesians. And this is what he said, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but rather as wise people making every opportunity, the most of every opportunity, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, singing is a language that God really cherishes. It's a language that God has given us to express our deepest longings as well as our greatest joy. It's singing with that most profound of trust 
in the one who created us, the one who loves us unconditionally. Singing is, is that tool that God has given us to help others be drawn to God's work of grace in our lives. You see that uh, church that was in the middle of nowhere in the jungle in Kananga, Zaire. They could point to the places other churches started in other tribes. Because of their singing and its waffling its way through the dense jungles of Zaire. Somebody traveling from one tribe to another. Someone out hunting a gazelle. Someone out just exploring would hear the music and would be drawn to the music of the church. Would come, be involved, and leave transformed in such a way that God's kingdom grows. Can we do the same? Can we do the same? Let us pray. Most holy God, we acknowledge that all the music that we sing and play at this church, we offer as a gift for you. For when we sing these songs and play these hymns in this place, we've chosen to bless you. And in return, the music that we send up to you, you send back to us and bless us as well. What we pray is that by your spirit, that we might find new depths of faith, depths of faith to share this music with others and that it may become our thankful prayer. We thank you for the song in our hearts, and we pray that the praise from our lips and the songs that we sing will not only praise you, but will draw others, will draw others to your kingdom. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. And all God's people said,
our inner nature renewed. We go forth to sing God's glory. With our sisters and brothers in Christ, our mothers and fathers in the faith. We, we go forth to invite others to join our song of Christ's love for everyone. Go with God and sing a song of God's grace.